Ruslan and Dr. Michael Brown. This is the topic of today's video. I've already done many videos on Ruslan. I've done a couple of videos on Dr. Michael Brown, and we're going to shortly review a segment of a video that I, I've already done on Dr. Michael Brown because he actually said in this video, I recorded it, where he said, future sins are not forgiven. I repeat, he said, future sins are not forgiven. That is blasphemy to the fullest. That is heresy to the fullest. And Ruslan is the type of guy that will support a false teacher such as this. He constantly surrounds himself with false teachers. He constantly promotes them. And I want to let you hear it for yourself. And before we start this video, I just want to say, Dr. Michael Brown was recently in a once saved, always saved, hating documentary basically hating on the clear doctrine, the true doctrine of eternal security. Once you are saved, well, you can't lose salvation. That is the truth of the Bible. And there's a whole documentary. Um, Honorato Diamante did a good rebuke about that. Okay, this is the video I done, church. I just want to show you where he said that future sins are not forgiven. But the fundamental false teaching of hyper grace is the moment you were born again, God not only forgives every sin you've committed and forgives you for who you are, mm -hmm. but he pronounces your future sins forgiven. Future sins. Okay, that's me talking. Let me let you hear that again, just in case you missed it. I got to I got to play it back because this is so this is one of the most radical things anybody could ever say. And the people who saw this video, I don't even think a lot of them noticed how bad this was. Because he, he's an intellectual. He's written a lot of books. None of that really matters if he's this wrong on the Bible truth, if he's this wrong on the gospel, if he's this wrong about our salvation. None of that matters. His age doesn't matter. His intellect doesn't matter. Anything. Hear this again, please. But the fundamental false teaching of hyper grace is pisses me off. the moment you were born again, God not only forgives every sin you've committed and forgives you for who you are, mm -hmm. but he pronounces your future sins forgiven. That's a fundamental issue, he says. That God pronounces your future sins forgiven. <laughs> when you are saved, when you are saved, all of your sins are forgiven. Past, present, future. All of them. And I have a verse to show you about that. I'm not just talking. There's verses. Multiple, but I'm going to show you just one I have ready. And that's Hebrews 7.27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's? For this he did once when he offered up himself. Church, this is talking about Jesus Christ. He offered himself up once. He did this once, once for all time. In the past, under the law, the Old Testament priests had to continually, continually offer up sacrifices for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ did this once for all time. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He died. He shed his blood for the remission of sins. He was buried. He rose on the third day. And he died once for all time. Once. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All we have to do is believe on him. Trust that he was a sacrifice, that he took care of our debt that we had to pay. The penalty, the wages of sin is death, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If we trust that Jesus Christ actually paid the debt for our sins and take, took, took care of that on the cross, we are saved. Hallelujah. And we cannot lose that salvation. Now, let me show you Ruth Lund's little promotion of Dr. Michael Brown. And so in that, Dr. Michael Brown decided to clap back in true Dr. Michael Brown-esque fashion. Tyler Last Capone. week, I did a video explaining why I don't cater to critics and basically said, listen, we all have to give account to God. We all have to run the race God's called us to run. I, I can't tell you what race you're to run. You can't tell me what race I'm to run. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, that like athletes competing in the games, we should be disciplined in all things and we should run our race so as to win. So at the end of our lives, we're going to give account for our lives, not for someone else's lives, right? We're going to give account for what we did with our life and how we responded to the calling of God. So I'm often challenged, well, why don't you do more of this? And why don't you focus more on this? And in particular, by 
by very strong anti-charismatic critics. Why don't you spend more time calling people out? So I, I've addressed yeah. that. I have been challenged not to call people out because I feel like I have fairly just scales when calling some of the foolishness out. We've stopped just because it's like you could chase down so many <laughs> false teaching and it gets exhausted. We just kind of stopped in general. Still, Yeah, he's he stopped because he's becoming more of a fence rider. You know, that would mess up his business. That would mess up his, uh, his branding. If he calls too many people out, well, he wants everybody to like him, in my opinion. He wants everybody to like him. And yeah, that would just mess up his whole... His whole thing because it's a business. It's a business. In my opinion. In my opinion. Suslon is just I don't even know what to say. Like what is he what is he doing? He's like bragging on Dr. Michael Brown. Like boasting and like how amazing Dr. Michael Brown is. And Dr. Michael Brown is boasting in his own his own wisdom or whatever whatever you want to call it. Book of Job, the faith to challenge God. Uh, mm. Doing a new translation of Job was probably the hardest thing academically I've ever done. And then my book, Israel's Divine Healer, 450 pages, 165,000 words. Uh, to this day, the most comprehensive study of divine healing in the Old Testament. So I'm just Especially wondering. A, a hundred thousand words? A hundred or something plus words. So he's writing like textbook level yep. curriculum, basically, that could be taught in colleges. Commentary on the web. If you guys don't know, Dr. Michael Brown is his PhD from NYU in, I want to say in Hebrew. So he's writing commentaries on Old Testament stuff because that's his area of expertise regarding all that PhD stuff and all that, all the books he's writing. You know, it doesn't matter if he can't even get the gospel right. If he's saying future sins aren't forgiven. Well, church, none of that stuff matters. That degree don't matter. Those books don't matter. None of it. You say future sins aren't forgiven. You are a straight heretic. Damnable heresy. And he needs to repent. Language, right? Sheesh. It's crazy. For those that challenge me and say I don't spend enough time calling out charismatic error. And let me pause to, to give you, you know, there's a scripture that I missed before we finish this. Um, just to add, add some more um, clarity to that we cannot lose our salvation. All right. John 10, 28 through 30. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. I mean, what does that say? Ne what is shall never perish mean? Dr. Michael Brown has all these PhDs. He, he knows the Hebrew. He knows all the, he, he has a degree. I mean, he's written books. But Dr. Michael Brown, he can't understand what this means. They shall never perish. He's so smart, but he can't understand that. Oh, people are not going to like me for this. I generally respect my elders, but I cannot respect somebody who butchers the gospel. I, I can't do it. I can't. I don't care how old they are. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Well, he says, well, you can't lose salvation, but you can forfeit it. You can forfeit salvation like it's a soccer match, a basketball game, a football game. You can just jump out the father's hand. Like, how do we do that? Well, you have to be stronger than God. Let's say... I have, this is an example. Let's say I have a, a little chicky chick, a little chick. Pretend this is a chick. It looks like an egg, but it's not. Pretend it's a chicken. And I love this chicken. And just pretend that I love this little chick. And I don't want this little chick to perish, but the little chick's going to try to jump out of my hand. Let, let's zoom in. The little chicky chick wants to jump out of my hand. And I love this little chicky chick. And I said, hey, and the chicky chick professed his faith in me at one time. And I said, hey, I am never going to let you perish, little chicky chick. But he just, I don't know, he gets rebellious one day. I want to fly. I want to jump away. He hasn't got his wings. He can't fly, but he wants to jump out. Well, guess what? If I'm all powerful, if I'm God, and he tries to jump out, <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is so good. If he tries to jump out, well... I'm all powerful. I'm not going to let him jump out. You can't leave this protection I've got. I promised you this. You shall never perish. So it tries to jump out. Nope. <laughs> now you're not falling out in my hand. You, I'm not even letting you fall out of my own hand. I don't like I'm protecting you from other invaders trying to trying to mess you up. But I'm also going to protect you from actually jumping out of my hand yourself. That's what it means. No man. No man shall pluck them out of my father's hand. But they forget. They don't even consider that this also applies 
to the very person who has salvation. If you think you can jump out the Father's hand once you're saved, you think you are stronger and more mighty than God, just like if the chicken could actually jump out of my hand. Well, the chicken's better than me. <laughs> I didn't protect the chicken. I didn't stop the chicken, the little chicky chick, from jumping out of my hand. I couldn't. Well, that means I'm not all powerful. I'm not almighty. That means I'm not God. But you people think they can literally jump out of God's almighty hand. The pride in that is amazingly and absurdly, absurdly. <laughs> it's so absurd. It's just very, I don't even know what to say, but let's move on. Let's move on. My father, which gave them me is greater than all, which I just explained this little story, this little illustration here. Even the person who has salvation <laughs> is greater than all. And no man, including the person who has salvation, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. And I and my father are one. Again, Michael Brown, somehow not wise enough to understand this. Harry's have you written or uh, major academic studies? Oh, you don't have time. <laughs> because you've got to concentrate on your calling to expose charismatic nonsense. And this is not your calling. Oh, okay, got it. No, no problem. We'll just let's put this stack over here. Let, let's get stack number two out here on my stack. desk. Um, you know, Jewish ministry, that's, that's very important in Scripture. And Paul said the gospel is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, also to the Greek in Romans 1.16. And we know that Paul writes in Romans 11, verses mm -hmm. 11 to 15, that the salvation of Israel will mean life from the dead. So surely that's something that you want to be engaging in. So... We've got this uh, study guide with a 22-hour video class on countering the counter missionaries. A lot of work went into that. And then um, one, two, three, four, five, five volume series over 1,500 pages on answering Jewish objections to Jesus. Oh That's the fruit really of 20 years of interaction with the Jewish community and study and prayer and research and writing, maybe even more combined. So we got those five volumes. And then The Real Kosher Jesus, which I wrote in response to Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's book, Kosher Jesus, The Real Kosher Jesus. Awesome. And then Resurrection. I think, I which think is Rabbi Shmuley, side note, I think that's one of the people, I, I don't want to open this kind of worms, but Candace Owens had a back and forth with. Oh, goodness. maybe, potentially. She's been talking about a couple of rabbis. Another Jewish outreach book, a real eye opener. And then to help Christians understand Jewish beliefs and practices, I've got a whole book on that 60 questions Christians ask about Jewish beliefs and practices. And then our most translated book, Our Hands Are Stained with Blood, which deals with the history of anti Semitism in the church and the Christian anti Semitism, which, which updates that in these critically important areas to call this out. So I'm just curious to know what you're doing. And this is aside from all the I don't know how somebody can sit through this whole thing of him basically boasting how many books he's written. Debates I've had with rabbis and thousands of pages of interaction and emails back and forth with the rabbinic community and training and teaching others at the seminary level to, to respond to Jewish objections to Jesus. I'm just curious to know what you've done because you're always telling me about what I need to be doing. So, so please tell me what you've been doing in Jewish evangelism and apologetics and, and combating anti-Semitism in the church and all the, oh, that's not your calling. Oh, okay, God, God, God. And you, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't understand eternal security. <laughs> he's putting out those these videos to, to be focused on Jewish objections. God, God, okay, fine, all, all clear. This is Fair amazing. Enough. Let's just move those out of the way. Let's, let's grab our next Here, thing. Ruslan, this is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> This is sad, y'all. Please, let's pr actually pray for Ruslan. I'm serious. You know, he did preach better at one time, the gospel. Um, I, I think he preached the true gospel at one time. I actually forgot. It's been so long. But um, now he's adding in works, evidence, evidence of works for salvation. You need to see, he needs to see evidence of good works. And it's just promoting false teachers such as Dr. Michael Brown, such as Saldivar, Salad Bar, such as just other false teachers um, I think Vlad Savchuk and um, uh, Singarelli, Mike Singarelli, all these false teachers he promotes and just puts on this platform and that don't preach the true gospel. But at one time, Ruslan was doing okay, but yeah, let's pray for him that, hey, you know, he would repent of that. Stack here. Stack. I can't see my way around it. Oh, okay. Put um, some respect on Dr. Michael yours. Brown's name. That's big. That's big. No, this is so cringe. Put some respect on Dr. Michael's Brown name. Put some respect. On the Lord's name, Jesus Christ, put some respect on his name. And you can't put any respect on his name if you're literally blaspheming him in your teaching, saying future sins aren't forgiven. I'm never going to let that go, Dr. Michael Brown, until you repent of that, until you um, take that back and recant of what you just said previously. Future sins are not forgiven? I don't know if people really understand how bad that is to say. Yo, <laughs> like God, if he wanted to, he has every right to strike down anybody who makes that statement. Like that's, that's so bad. We're right in the thick of the battle of the culture wars now. And, and, and how do we, how do we reach out to those who identify as LGBTQ with compassion while standing against a destructive agenda? So a queer thing happened to America, 700 pages, 1500 endnotes. That was based on research and writing over a six year period. And then big question, massive question being raised and challenged. Can you begin Christian? A whole book on that. 
and, and then another one, outlasting the gay revolution. How we have to live strategies to live in such a way that we can now push back against the rising tide of whole libraries activism. So uh, three books on that, major books. And then more broadly, saving a sick America. What do we do to, through the Bible, through the gospel? Not by taking over, but by living on our lives. How can we see moral and cultural transformation? And then Jezebel's war with America. This demonic attack on our nation. And then the silencing of the lambs. Uh, by cancer McClaney cold. sound effects hyping Dr. Michael Brown up. Hyping up a heretic. Y'all, stop. Zach too. Zach, if he ever sees this video, Zach is Ruslan's. Is that, is that his name? I think that's his name. Zach is a young guy, you know? So he's a young guy, most young guy. Most young guys gets it wrong. If I can even talk, y'all. Most young guys get it wrong. Um, you know, when they're young, they can be just young and naive. So hopefully Zach will snap out of it. But unfortunately, he's um working with Ruslan, and so Ruslan has a large influence over him, and therefore it's probably is affecting his the his theology. So, but anyways, yeah, that's the situation. And then just start the revolutionary calling to follow Jesus by life and by death, the book revolution, and the changes that need to come in the church if we're bringing out those changes, revolution in the church. So I'm just, I'm just wondering, because you're always telling me what I need to be doing and what I should be concentrating on. <laughs> uh, please tell me about the, the books you've written, equipping the body on the culture wars, and, and, and the material that you've put out to help the church. Combat. Hey, sir, if I've written none, no books at all, and I've written a book in my past, actually, it was a blasphemous book. I wasn't even saved at the time. It was a New Age book. But even if you've written no books and you know the true gospel, you are more wise than Dr. Michael Brown. Yes, you, if you've never written a book at all. No degree. You didn't even graduate high school. No book. <laughs> Failed every class. But you know the true gospel and you're saved and you're a child of God and you preach the true gospel. You, my friend, are operating in more wisdom than a doctor. Michael Brown. Serious deception. This makes me hopeful that I can write a book. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? This makes me hopeful that I can write a book. Anyways, fact, that's enough of that. And I just want to finish this video off with one more scripture. Jeremiah 9.23, to combat all this boasting. Jeremiah 9.23, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Hear that? Even if the man is wise, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. God hates boasting. The only person you should boast in is Jesus Christ. And yet, boasting is being supported by Ruslan, and it really seems like Dr. Michael Brown's boasting in his own, quote, wisdom, unquote. Anyways, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, I hope Ruslan repents. Dr. Dr. Michael Brown is, has been teaching the same blasphemous her heresy for so long I don't think he would repent. I mean, he's been doing it for so long, but potentially, maybe so. I don't know. Anyways, uh, may the Lord leave you in grace, peace, may he keep you, may he shine his face upon you always. And always remember, your future sins are forgiven. Your future sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. All of it. God shed his blood for the remission of every single sin you have committed and you will commit. Hallelujah. Glory to God.